Good morning and a very warm welcome. You are watching Janata Television and this is English Bulletin with me, Yutsa Bhatrai. The top stories first. <music> Coronavirus claims two more lives in Nepal. Government says a rate of infection is slowing down. Landslides sweep away 19 houses in Lamjung. No human casualty reported. TIA to operate 15 international flights from next month. Passengers are required to arrive four hours before flight. Airstrikes in Afghanistan kill 45. Officials say civilians and Taliban among those injured and killed. And Japan decides not to halt Olympics. Tokyo 2020 preparing to deliver games with COVID-19. And now, the news in detail. Coronavirus has claimed two more lives in Nepal. According to the Ministry of Health and Population, a 60-year-old man from Tanusha and a 49-year-old Chinese woman have become the latest victim of the disease. The 60-year-old victim from Tanusha was admitted to BP Koirala Institute of Health Sciences last week after suffering from fever and cough. He died while undergoing treatment in ICU later. Later, his swab sample tested positive, informed the ministry. Meanwhile, the 49-year-old Chinese woman who died of coronavirus had been working in Pokhara. She was initially admitted to Manipal Teaching Hospital and later airlifted to Grandi Hospital in Kathmandu. She was then transferred to TU Teaching Hospital after testing positive for coronavirus. According to the ministry, she died yesterday while undergoing treatment. The death toll from coronavirus in Nepal has reached 42. पचास वर्षीय चीनिया महिला को पोखरा में काम करते बस रहने को मणिपाल अस्पताल भर्ना भाई में थप उपचार को लगी साउन दुई गते हेलीकप्टर काठमंड ग्रैंडी अस्पताल लियाइ उपचार कराने क्रम में कोरोना परीक्षण का लगी नमूना संकलन करी जांच करोना पुष्टि भाई उनप उपचार को लगी त्रिवी शिक्षण अस्पताल लगे थी र उपचार को क्रम में मिति दुई हजार सतहत्तर साउन सात गते निधन The government conducted 3,779 tests through PCR method yesterday, out of which 100 turned out positive. The number of coronavirus cases in the country has now reached 18,094. According to the ministry, the rate of infection has dropped to below 3% at present. The number of active cases of coronavirus is 5,370. Landslides triggered by heavy rainfall have swept away 19 houses in Kodi of Marshangdi Rural Municipality in Lamjung District. Government authorities confirmed that 19 houses were completely destroyed in Palotan village of Kudi, while 62 other houses were partly damaged by the landslide. The landslides struck yesterday morning. Yesterday's disaster was the second time in a row after initial landslides on Tuesday. Fearing that the landslide could occur again, the locals of the area had shifted elsewhere before the natural calamity. No human casualty has been reported in the area. However, four people were injured while moving forward safely. They had returned to their homes to remove household stuffs when the disaster struck again. Two of the injured are undergoing treatment in District Hospital Lamjung, while the other two are receiving treatment in local health post. Officials of Marshangdi Rural Municipality informed that the locals are sheltering in a nearby school. Incessant rainfall since the past three days and the flood that followed have displaced the settlement of 140 people at Chaji of Shripur 11 in Birganj metropolitan city, Parsa. There are more than 300 houses near the bank of Sirsia River in Chaji. All homes have been 
inundated with three to four feet of water due to flooding of the Assyria River. Most of the homes have been damaged after the whole settlement was flooded. Residents have been forced to take shelter in local school as the increase in the river's water level continues. Families of Mushahar community have been rescued from the flooded area. 20 Muslim families have moved with their relatives to safer location. More than 140 persons have been transferred to a local school for the time being. The flood victims were rescued by joint efforts of Nepal police and local volunteers. This is Jonathan, this is Jonathan Bulletin. We'll be right back after a short break. Welcome back. We continue with other national news. Thiruvan International Airport has made arrangement to conduct 15 international flights per day starting from August 17 next month. The airport is in capacity to operate at least 15 international flights daily, analyzing COVID-19 risk factor, informed Airport Chief Devendra Casey. The arrival and departure process takes longer than on ordinary days, hence the airport will resume service from limited flights, Casey further informed. Likewise, 30 to 40 internal flights can be commenced per day later, Casey added. तर आउने नर्मल मान्छे अथवा कोभिड सँग अफेक्टेड मान्छे सबैले के बुझ्दिनु पर्यो भने देखि मेरा कारण अरुलाई यो फाइलिनु भएन भनेर बुझ्दिनु पर्यो यो हाम्रो सबैसँग अनुरोध छ All passengers traveling via international flights will now be required to arrive at the airport 4 hours prior than the flight's departure The airport has sufficient manpower to resume service but lacks protective equipment to contain the coronavirus infections, Casey added. He clarified that all running airports within the nation will resume operations adopting to minimum health security standard. Full safety security maintained. तर यात्रु सुरक्षित हुनु पर्यो हैन र यहाँ काम गर्ने व्यक्ति सुरक्षित हुनु पर्यो त्यसका लागि चाहिँ नि हेल्थ का सम्पूर्ण सचेतनाहरु फुल्ली मेन्टेन हुनु पर्यो नत्र त कसरी सकिन्छ केसी आल्सो रिक्वेस्टेड द पैसेंजर्स टु बी सेल्फ अवेयर व्हाइल ट्रैवलिंग बाय अ एयरपोर्ट एन्ड एडेड दैट पैसेंजर्स कैन इन्फॉर्म द एयरपोर्ट अथॉरिटी इन केस ऑफ एनी डिफिकल्टी The government has authorized Nepal Electricity Authority to purchase or sell electricity to India and Bangladesh. With the approval from the government, NEA can now sell excess electricity to the two neighboring countries. The Ministry of Energy, Water Resources and Irrigation had proposed selling excess electricity to the neighboring countries. The government recently approved the proposal. The government has given a full authority to the NEA to sell or purchase electricity. And now, the news from Economic Fund. <music> Nepal Rashtra Bank has renamed its seven departments and offices. A governor-level decision to rename the offices of NRB has come in force starting from the first day of current fiscal year, that is, 16th of July. As per the new decision, Department of General Services has now been renamed as Department of Property and Service Management. Likewise, Department of Investigation has been retitled as Department of Economic Investigation.
Department of Information and Technology has been reinstated as Information and Technology Division. NRB's offices outside the valley have been transformed as provincial offices. Likewise, a Department of Microfinance Promotion and Supervision has been changed to Microfinance Supervision Department. Banking Office have also been reinstated as a Department of Banks. Nepal Rashtra Bank has circulated a new thousand rupees note starting yesterday. A picture of a rare twin elephants by the name of Ram and Lakshman from elephant breeding farm Sauraha have replaced the previous image of a single elephant. The notes are however same size and colour as before NRB informed. A picture of Mount Everest has been illustrated on the left side of the currency and a watermark of rhododendron flower on the right. The note bears the signatures of former governor Dr. Chiranjivi Nepal. The note also contains a Roman letter M on the lower right with the visually impaired NRB further informed. Time for a short break here at Chanada Bulletin. Stay tuned for international and sports news. Welcome back and now for international news. Airstrikes in eastern Afghanistan killed 45 people, including civilians and Taliban, Reuters reported yesterday, citing the local officials. Ali Ahmed Farikiyar, the governor of the governor of Adgarshan Ad Ad district in the eastern Afghanistan province of Herat said at least eight civilians were among the dead. He confirmed that 45 people have been killed in airstrike by security forces in the Kham Aziarat area. It was unclear how many of the remaining 37 were civilians and how many were members of the Taliban. Afghanistan's Ministry of Defense said it was investigating allegations of civilian casualties in attacks by Afghan forces in the area. A spokesman for U.S. forces in Afghanistan said they had not taken part in Wednesday's airstrikes. The United States is winding back troops under an agreement with the Taliban struck in February, which was meant to pave the way to formal peace talks between the insurgents and the Afghan government. However, disagreement over the release of prisoners demanded by the Taliban and rising violence around the country has hampered progress and talks have y are yet to start. Global coronavirus infections surged past 15 million yesterday, according to a Reuters tally. According to the news agency, the pandemic has been gathering pace as countries remain divided in their response to the crisis. In the United States, which has the highest number of cases in the world with 3.91 million infections, President Donald Trump warned it will probably, unfortunately, get worse before it gets better. The top five countries with the most cases is rounded out by Brazil, India, Russia and South Africa, but the Reuters tally shows the disease is accelerating the fastest in America, which accounts for more than half of the world's infections and half its deaths. Globally, the rate of new infections show no sign of slowing, according to the Reuters tally based on official reports. After the first COVID-19 case was reported in Wuhan, China, in early January, it took about 15 weeks to reach 2 million cases. By contrast, it took just 8 days to climb over 15 million from the 13 million reached on July 13. Health experts stress that official data among certainly under reports both infections and deaths particularly in countries with a limited testing capacity. The official number of coronavirus cases at 15 million is at least a triple the number of severe influenza illness recorded annually, according to World Health Organization data. Meanwhile, the death toll of more than 616,000 in seven months is close to the upper range of yearly influenza deaths. 
You are watching Jonathan Bulletin and now the latest from the world of sports. Tokyo Olympics organizers are preparing to host the Games next year, even if the global coronavirus pandemic hasn't eased substantially. Organizing Committee Chief Executive Toshihiro Muto told Reuters yesterday. The Tokyo Olympics had been scheduled to start on Friday, but were put back to 2021 because of the pandemic. Since then, organizers have scrambled to rearrange an event that has been almost a decade in the making while trying to ensure next year's Olympics are safe for athletes, officials and supporters. Muto said that although organizers hope the threat posed by the virus could be reduced, Nobody knows what the situation will be when the Games start on July 23, 2021. Organizers are assuming coronavirus will remain a major problem. It is rather difficult for us to expect that the coronavirus pandemic is contained, Muto told Reuters. But if we can deliver the Games in Tokyo with coronavirus, Tokyo can be the role model for the next Olympic Games or other various international events, he added. We are at the end of Chanata Bulletin and the headlines once again. Coronavirus claims two more lives in Nepal. Government says a rate of infection is slowing down. Landslides sweep away 19 houses in Lamjung. No human casualty reported. TIA to operate 15 international flights from next month. Passengers are required to arrive four hours before flight. Airstrikes in Afghanistan kill 45. Officials say civilians and Taliban among those injured and killed. And Japan decides not to halt Olympics. Tokyo 2020 preparing to deliver games with COVID-19. And that's all from the English News Desk for today. You can follow Jonada Television and our programs on various social media platforms, including on our website, jonathasamachar.com. Keep watching Jonada Television. Namaste.